Dang, Lindsay, you're wearing the same thing you were just wearing. Yeah. We must be traveling. <laughs> it's a traveling day. It's a traveling day. And when you wear the same thing like three days in a row, you, you know you're on the road. So we are excited. We're leaving here. We're headed to uh, the Finger Lakes, yeah. which if you look on a map, it looks like four fingers, five fingers, six fingers, which is West Virginia, seven fingers, eight fingers. No, it, there's not that many. It looks like a bunch of fingers just kind of carved out in the land. And I'm 97% sure that was from old glacial, uh, as the glaciers, you know, were ice and they, they move, glaciers move and they scrape the ground and they tear up rocks. I'm pretty sure that's that's what formed them. So they're glacier lakes. I'm, I mean, don't quote me on it. I mean, you can quote me on it. <laughs> We, uh, we don't we don't fact check if you haven't figured this out. <laughs> Plus, you already know, I know a lot about a little or a little about a lot or a lot about nothing at all. I don't know. But uh, it's pretty cool because it, it does look like fingers were just <laughs> scraped into the ground. And all throughout there, apparently, there's tons of vineyards and beautiful countryside, similar to what you'd see in Napa and uh, where we were in Chillon in the, in the um, Washington. Washington State area, the, the wine country along the Columbia River. So we're gonna go check that out, and um, there's another place. What's that falls? Glen Glen Falls. Watkins. Watkins. Now you've got me. Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen. I'm good at messing everybody up. So if you ever need a yep. good messing up, let's get in a conversation. We're gonna go check out Watkins Glen, which is on. I'm gonna butcher the name. Lake Seneca. 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 Yeah. Lake Seneca. Seneca. <laughs> Lindsay's great at saying really awesome things. Um, Lake Seneca is where we're gonna go. Kind of, sort of. So we're going to take you there. This is going to be a long, boring drive. We're going to actually do interstate because we just want to teleport there, and that's not possible and at this current state. We don't want to go through mountains. Yeah, we can't, afford, we can't afford the teleport RV. You may have a teleport RV. If you do, it's pretty cool. But we are going to drive on the interstate 65 miles an hour, very fuel efficient, and we will get to that area sometime later this afternoon. And then we're going to peace out. We're going to just go black on you because I'm going to get some work done. Yeah, we, we got work. We got some work we got to do. Part of our story on the road is that we are not funding this through lottery funds or uh, early retirement. We are funding this through good old hard work using our noggins. We worked with our hands before. Now we're using our brains and we're working. So we are, uh, we're going to stop for a couple days and hopefully be in the woods and get some work done. Yeah. And uh, then when we get back to you, well, I'm tired of talking about the future. Let's go. You ready Let's do to it. go? After a very long day of driving and what ended up being about five hours and three different times we changed our minds about whether we could handle the roads or not, uh, we found it a perfect spot here at Blueberry Patch Campground and it's in Finger Lakes National Forest. $15 a night with your National Park Pass, $7.50 a night. We got super excited as we were pulling up. The colors are right here right now. So we're probably going to be here for, I don't know, three weeks or so. What do you think? as long as we can stay. We're going to be here as for long as the colors are here. We're going to be here as long as the colors are here cuz we have found the spot and we're about 15 minutes away from Watkins Glen State Park and a couple of the other places to explore in the area. So we are in the perfect spot to be. We are of course while well, we're dry dry camping. So that's our limitation is we'll have to and we're in trees. So we're going to have to not rely on our solar 
We're gonna have to crank up the generator and charge while we're driving around doing the different things in town. But this place is spectacular. Of everywhere we've been so far, I think this is where, this is where we found it. This is fall right here. What do you think? This is amazing. Like, as soon as we drove down here, I'm just like, mind blown. Like, I love it. It's awesome. It's so quiet. All you can hear are the wind in the trees and the chipmunks squeaking. The dogs are in heaven. Yeah, this is it. There is a storm on the way, so the beauty that we have right now is going to be 100% rain, 100% chance tomorrow, starting tonight around midnight or so. So we're going to go ahead and get set up for camp, and we will call it a day or so, and then we'll, um, we'll get back at exploring uh, as soon as the rain is gone. Today is a work day, but the rain let up and we couldn't resist going on a hike. So we're out on one of the trails right behind the campsite. It's beautiful. The colors are amazing. Dogs are happy. Lindsay, we're not taking those leaves with us in the camper. There's no room. I know. You, you got a second dog that takes up room in the camper, not leaves. I don't want to take the leaves. Look how pretty they are.
Well, that was a great hike, except a couple things happened while we were out. The first is that we all had a blast. And you know that Evers had a blast because she's got doo doo. This is nice. cow poop. Yep. While we were out, while Lindsay was flying the drone and I was watching, the dog decided she was going to go roll around in cow poop. So that means she's getting a bath, which is great because we're dry camping out here. <laughs> I'm going to have to waste water on the dog. The second thing that happened, I guess the third thing that happened, we had fun. Dog had fun. She rolled. Third thing was she starts sneezing and coughing and gagging. I stick my finger down her throat trying to get her to vomit something up. Nothing comes up continues it feels like it's in her lungs so I strip down to my bare essentials and I pick the dog up and carry her Why covered in poop covered in poop what love is that to carry your dog covered in cow poop it is now on my arms is on my shirt <laughs> pretty sure it's in my face but for the moment I was freaking out because we were a mile and a half in the woods and I didn't know what was wrong with her she doesn't usually let me carry her or pick her up like that. And she came and she put her paws up over my shoulders. So I knew she was not feeling it. Well, good morning. Good morning. Kind of made light yesterday of Everest getting poop all over her and then me having to carry her because she had this little wheeze. pickup wheeze thing going on. And it went away and she had a great dinner and yeah, it's slept through the night. Yeah, completely normal. No noises. Everything's great. And then about four o'clock in the morning, she started wheezing again. So we were gonna go into um, the state park today, first at first light. We were. We were, and now we are going to the veterinarian. So we found one that opens at eight o'clock. It is turning eight o'clock right now. So we're gonna give them a call, roll up there. Hopefully they can see her. Hopefully it's not an emergency. It yeah. kind of feels like it's a cold, but it's just an odd time for it to come on. It just came on so suddenly. Yeah. You know, she's. I mean, we, we're hoping that's all it is. We're not vets. We've been around her. She's been in trouble before with vets, and she's. And she's acting normal. She, she's acting. She's okay. acting normal, and she had regular poop, regular eats. Everything's been regular except for this thing that just won't go away. So we're gonna go get a professional to tell us what's up, and we'll take you there with us. Kind of show you that. Um, I mean, it's just like when the truck has an issue. First instinct is. Yeah. Can you get vet care? Yeah. For your dogs when you're on the road. Yeah, like I, I freak out right away when something's <laughs> wrong, and then I realize we can figure it out. We'll find a vet. A vet will figure it out. Mm. It's just a matter of us not doing what we wanted to do, which is no big deal, and whatever it's going to cost us. So we've got time. We'll figure it out. Let's go do it. <coughs> okay, sweet thing. The drama continues. The vet that we had picked out that had great ratings, that was open at 8 o'clock, that was 10 minutes away, does not take new patients because of COVID. So this poor thing is another suffering soul because of crazy policy. I don't know why they wouldn't see her, but it's not their responsibility. So we have options. We're about 20, 30 minutes away from Ithaca, which is a bigger town, and there's quite a few vets out that way. So. Lindsay's on the phone right now trying to figure out which one we're going to go to and hopefully get this taken care of sooner than later. I promised Evie she'd be seeing a doctor in 15 minutes and I don't like being called a liar. So we'll get her taken care of. We are at Cornell University, which is beyond my pay grade. I didn't even think about applying there. To go, I mean, it's it's top Never notch. Never was on my uh, field of vision. I don't even think I could spell Cornell. It's not that hard to spell. K O R. It's harder to spell Ithaca where it's located. You're right. It is in Ithaca, New York, which I will not be coming back to Ithaca. If you're from Ithaca, I like your town, but there's just too many hills. It seems like we were just perpetually going uphill to get here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in a little better better spirits because Everest is now in the vet's care. There's nothing we can do at this point. We are at the Cornell Animal Hospital. It's the emergency yep, hospital. This was the only hospital that would take us in today. The no only one. Nothing against the veterinarians in New York or the governor's mandates about how well, it's, they can't it's all take COVID. I know. I'm not I'm not blaming Cuomo is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not blaming Cuomo. 
for putting these ridiculous mandates that my dog couldn't go to a normal vet in a normal neighborhood 10 minutes away from where we were because we're out of towners trying to visit with a new patient pet. So anyway, all that stupid garbage aside, our dog is in good hands. We just spoke with the first, um, I guess, vet tech, vet tech uh, university student, and they did notice some signs in her lungs that were, uh, when they did the stethoscope, that there was some labored breathing, that she was breathing heavier, and we kind of knew that. So they've got her history. The doctor will see her next. The vet will see her next. We'll get another phone call back, and hopefully Cornell will have this all solved for us. Yeah. Um, so we're thinking that she possibly aspirated something into her lungs. Yeah, which... So, which all signs lead to that and that's kind of pretty much so what a dog does is it runs around leading with its nose right and... and it's just you know how it works we are paying cornell prices for this i think it was 200 dollars just to, just to walk seen. in the door and i couldn't go in Lindsay couldn't go in even with our face mask on we weren't allowed to even walk through the door couldn't even use her own leash took her collar off i mean it was yeah. It was really like uh, the, I would say, de de dehumanizing, except she's a dog, so she's not really a human anyway. De dogonizing. Um, it, it was just anyway. So that's a story. Um, God willing, Everest is fine, and we can hike with her and get back to normal and enjoy. I mean, there's beautiful trails out here. I'm beautiful, just hoping beautiful we caught it in time. Yeah. So that she can hike. Yeah, but if not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. There was a, a park she couldn't go into anyway, the one and then the other. We were going to take the dogs in. Yeah. But we obviously, her health is top priority above my health. I mean, I woke up with a little snivel too, but we're not taking me to emergency room. Not in the snivel like what she had. I didn't, I didn't have a snivel. I'm just trying to say that this dog <laughs> is about the most important thing yeah, in this life of mine. Aside from my wife, of course. He loves the dog more than me. <laughs> I, there's no empirical evidence of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you, yeah, no evidence. When you had fluid, sure. when you had fluid right. in your lungs, double walking lung pneumonia. But that was before Everest. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What did we do? We took care of you. We took care of you. When you had, when you had sinus infection, what happened? Boom. Let's get it done. Took you to the doctor. Took you to the hospital. Had the surgery. No questions asked. Not a matter of money. Not a matter of time. Not a matter of the fact that I had to raise eight boys by myself because you were in a bed for the next five days. No, no matter to any of that. All this is saying that I'm high maintenance. It's just saying that I love you. <laughs> and I love my dog. And you know with love, there are no levels of love. It's just, it's you love or you don't love. That's just how it goes, right? You love or you don't love. Sorry, you were watching this to get... This idea of truck camper living in uh, in the fall leaves in New York, and here we are talking deep philosophical matters about love. But <laughs> how did it get to love? That's what I, I <laughs> that's what I do. I, I trans I transcend the, the the present situation into something bigger. And then we just keep talking, and then it turns into a forty five minute video. Yeah, sorry if I don't cut this out. It's because I felt it was really important for you to think about the concept of so love. You... But if you do, remember the first thing you do is you freak out, because it is okay to freak out. It's okay. Freak she out is the bit. she is the love of our life. We don't have children. She is our child. So the first thing we do is we freak out, and then we say, okay, how do we fix it? And fixing it is almost always a matter of time and money. It's always finding somebody, taking the time to find them, and then shelling over whatever they ask. So you freak out, and then you say, if you're okay with giving up your time and giving up your money because that thing is more important, then you got a solution. It'll, it'll work itself out. And that's kind of what we've learned on the road, I would say, in two and a half years of going through some crazy stuff, is just let it pass. If it's that important to you to be upset, then you do what you can to solve it, and then you let it go. You can't can't continue to be upset. So right now we could be here for two hours. We could be here for 45 minutes. We could be here for six hours. We don't know, but there's nothing else we can do. So on that note, we're going to let it pass, and we'll update you when we know. What we do know is we got to feed this little guy. Well, okay. He finally went to sleep. Yeah, he was jumping all over ever, just wanting to play with oh her. Oh, my she, gosh. We she had wasn't to put him it. in the crate and lock the door. <laughs> Bye, Felicia.
we i mean we are from florida so we're we're up here for another two or three weeks and then working our way slowly back so so we would be i mean in the area a couple of days we definitely want to stay and make sure if anything happens we could be treated but we don't have an established vet in the area and that was part of our problem with having to come to you nobody would nobody would see her because she's not an established patient Yeah. Jump into. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're not worried about her right now in the short term, we're not worried and I think I think that makes sense to just monitor her and hopefully we don't have to go to the you know, what do we do next? Um, cuz it's stress stressful enough trying to figure out where to take her this morning. So Okay. All right. That sounds good. All right. Thank you. So they didn't find anything visually, which is kind of what we suspected. So it's a small irritant. I think we're okay. Okay. Um, I do think we should stay in the area for another we're day or two. And we're planning to do that anyways. If things get worse he said at least call them and they'll help us figure out what to do with the mm -hmm. next next step in terms of maybe they can call a vet for us and say look we've already done x y and z it's a simple thing that she needs yeah can you you know can you check her out okay. rather than have to come all the way back here for emergency yeah. care the yeah. drive's not the problem it's the cost yeah because i mean she's definitely not an emergency situation patient but that was the only way it was the only seen. only option today was to treat her as an emergency and I mean, urgent is the word I would have used is for sure is that we didn't want her to sit around and wait, but we could have waited till four o'clock for a vet to see her at the end of the day today after all the other appointments. Yeah, she would, she would have been fine, but nobody would do that. So we had to do the emergency route. So hopefully we don't have to do that in the future. I feel good knowing that they didn't find anything bad. Yeah. Usually you want to know what you're, what's bad, but in this case, I mean, she puts her nose in sand and she easily could have sniffed something up that's just irritating her. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Next step is getting her, picking her up. You want your sister? <laughs> Yay. Your sister's back. She's okay. She'll be okay. <laughs> Do you have a nice nap? <laughs> She's definitely out of it. Yeah, not as much as when uh, she had to have x-rays uh, in Wyoming. Oh. oh, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> so this leash cost us $210, but we got quality care from Cornell University veterinarians for free, which is pretty awesome. So if you're That's looking a, for a $210 leash. An amazing rainbow leash right there. I like it. <laughs> it did do a fantastic job. That price was a lot lower than what we thought we were going to be I paying. mean, we got quoted $200 just to be seen. And she got seen, sedated, checked over thoroughly, and all that jazz for ten dollars. <laughs> Two hundred and ten. <laughs> no, that was all free with the leash. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm ready for a nap. Yeah. Oh, let's get you in the truck. Let's do that. Let's get back out in the woods. What a day. Ready to go back to the woods. Yep. That's love right there. He wouldn't do that for me. <laughs> Yesterday she had poop right here. Oh, be sweet. Oh, she fell. It's okay. She can't even stand up. Well, she walked hey, down. Hug. 
All right. Oh, look at her mouth. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> right, let's get into the woods. Hug. Right. Oh my goodness. You okay, baby? That look Watch on your her. face. All right. <laughs>